Atif Yukub from London, uh, born and raised, uh, so born in Manchester, uh, raised in London, uh, been involved in various businesses over the years, uh, been working in UK, Dubai, um, Far East, Europe, uh, and different industries, and um, now I'm involved with uh, ZeroChain. ZeroChain is a decentralized cloud. Our line is uh, fast, flexible, and free. And uh, those three things are broken down into the speed uh, of our trans transactions, which is um, sub-second finality, uh, which is industry first, will be um, the fastest blockchain in the space. Um, our consensus is unique, so we have two-dimensional Byzantine de delegate proof of stake, which um, allows um, a faster transaction confirmation. And we have a three by three miner set, so um, you know if the first miner is being uh, DDoSed. Move, block generation moves to second miner and likewise to the third miner and we have mining shuffle protocol which allows the, um, the block generation to move around the network so it's more difficult uh, to do a DDoS uh, on the uh, network. Essentially um, eradicates that because you'd have to spend a lot of money to bring uh, down the network. So the network's faster, it's more secure. Flexibility part for us is really important because you're seeing a lot of blockchains now saying that they can do X amount of transactions per second, they can, you know, like uh, they're super fast, they're gonna be the fastest blockchain. Although we have the speed element uh, covered, the next most important part for us is flexibility where you say you have an IoT application which has different requirements, so they need a block uh, generation of like one or two seconds, and um, an AI application has a different uh, requirement where they need like a 10 second or 15 second block generation time. So with our self-forking protocol, you can uh, fork a chain and create your own chain, which doesn't really need to revert back to the main chain for consensus. So it's essentially, it's an independent chain. Along with that, you take over a certain amount of the mining power, um, and then that blockchain runs uh, parallel along with all the other chains. And this is how we solve scalability. So essentially becoming, uh, zero chain becomes infinitely scalable. What we see is like each DApp project having various chains on each network, and then interoperability between these chains. So an IoT chain will be able to communicate with the microtransaction chain, and then maybe with the storage chain, which unlocks a certain amount of data for um, an application. So that's where we see the future, where um, not a single chain has the burden of everything. Uh, so you can have a, a chain which does a million transactions per, per second, but if uh, a block doesn't be, uh, you know, get generated or you know, there's a stall in the network, um, um, or the network has a burden, like uh, Ethereum network has, uh, you know, like crashes because of uh, crypto kitties or something like that. Then um, you know you're taking down the whole network and everybody gets affected by it. Whereas with our solution of self forking chains, one chain can have an issue or it can slow down or can have a burden, but it doesn't bring the whole network down. And the free element part is our conversion of cost into asset. So what we're saying is that you buy tokens and you hold the tokens and while you're holding those tokens you get free storage. The real utility comes in where that token is actually giving you something and what we're saying is while you're holding the token uh, you receive storage when you don't need the storage anymore you delete your data and then you can sell that token on your exchange again and get your money back with inflation control we have one to two percent inflation control and um, with 200 million tokens in the mining pool over time and with adoption of the network the price of the token increases so essentially it's a, it's a two-sided thing where uh, you know your token value is appreciating because of uh, demand you're having free storage while you're holding those tokens and then at the end of it you retrieve uh, you, you delete your data and you retrieve your token and you sell it. Um, so it's a win-win situation. Really, they don't have nothing to lose. So that's fast, flexible and free. Uh, that's zero chain. So it's a decentralized cloud. Uh, we have our own blockchain protocol with our own unique con consensus. Our token sale uh, was really strange. Uh, the whole thing happened really, really fast. We didn't do no marketing. Uh, we had no agencies, we had no promotion going on, we had no YouTube videos, you know, there was literally no information about Zero Chain on the internet. The main reason really is that we never had to, like we didn't have to go down that route. We had a four month plan to kind of do our token sale, which would have led into a main crowd sale. We never had to execute on that plan because things just, you know, the traction kind of gained so fast. Um, so we did one event in uh, San Francisco, which was WCF. That was the first public event that we went to. People started to gain interest in Zero Chain. They read the white paper they really like the technology and at that time I think there was a there was a huge shift from 
projects where people were launching um, D apps and uh, different ideas to like protocols to real technology which is going to move the space forward. So I think that was part to do with it. Um, there was a real uh, appetite for good protocols in the space. We went from like uh, you know first few uh, million all the way up to like uh, you know 39 million hard cap really really fast within a few weeks. One of the f the fastest investor was. Uh, was like 27 minutes uh, you know I remember that really clearly I was on the telegram this guy like sends a DM and he says oh hi I'll, um, I really like your project uh, any more information I said yeah okay have a look at the white paper and uh, he said yeah I've read it it's, uh, it's really really good uh, I want to invest I said all right okay let me send you documents you know see normally a couple of days people come back to you uh, he, he sends me a message back again he says yeah I've read the documents I sent them back already I said oh, well check the email yeah everything's fine he said okay your KYC is approved I sent an email back with the ETH address, I said maybe send it tomorrow the day after, check everything. A couple of minutes again, he comes back, he says, yeah, I'm done. And, uh, and, and he wanted to invest like five, six million dollars, but we capped him at two million. So he really understood the tech, he saw it and he kind of jumped on it. And he was like an early adopter of Ethereum. So those, those are the kind of like guys that, you know, got in on zero chain early. Um, and so we never really had to sell it hard. Uh, the technology sold itself, I guess. A lot of people ask who's Zero Chain's competitors. Um, on the offset, when people look at it, um, they see it as a storage protocol. So they bring up all the like other storage coins. We don't see it as, as direct competitors to them because one, our blockchain protocol is very, very unique. Um, and second, uh, nobody else is offering free storage. So if there was another protocol offering free storage, uh, we would say that was our direct competitor. But the likes of uh, Filecoin, Sia, Storage, um, all these blo uh, blockchain storage protocols um, out there are like, you could say, indirect competitors. Um, people who are offering decentralized cloud services because that's what we're promoting. I think we'll be first to market with a lot of things. And um, many of the others uh, are similar to what traditional clouds provide, but with the tokenized um, element of it for the payment. So it's not revolutionary in terms of what the actual structure is and how the um, you know the applications operate within their cloud. Um, and I think that for us is is really unique, and that's why you know we don't have a direct competitor. Coming up now uh, in uh, May is our token distribution, and then um, after that will be that will be followed by a trading platform, um, and we'll unlock the tokens. And then from there, we'll go into testnet. We have um, individual uh, papers. So we have an architecture, uh, a white paper with our general architecture. But what we're doing is we're releasing individual white papers to endorse each protocol to a further strength. So after token release, um, we'll do an event uh, where we launch some of the white papers uh, with more detail. Um, that will be followed up by our test network. So we, you know, got various partnerships at the moment who can like test out um, the network at the early stages. So that will be alpha and beta, and then that will take us through the summer. And then um, target is for the mainnet to launch by the end of the year. We're quite aggressive on the partnership side of things. Uh, we see, you know, the success of this industry and you know the growth aspect uh, through partnerships. Because if we work together, I think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be better for the space and it's going to uh, enable faster adoption. It's really practical in that example because you know they, you know, they partner with various projects, and um, you know to see which one is kind of kind of enable traction for different sectors of the the space. Um, so we've been following that line, um, announcing partnerships. Pretty much once uh, every week, uh, we are announcing our next partner, which is uh, Ogme. Uh, they are, you know, IoT partnership where um, they have traditional companies working with them already, like sort of um, UPS, Carrefour, L'Oreal, uh, Toyota. So, so big names which are already um, using um, IoT services, but now are interested in the blockchain space and are looking to move to that. So, our strategy is to uh, partner with various companies like this, who can um, expose us to um, these companies, and we can work hand in hand uh, to provide real case solutions um, uh, and hopefully you know succeed together. Initial challenge is always development first to deliver the network. 
uh, blockchain development is not easy definitely as as time goes on you realize um, you know it, it's, a, it's a very difficult challenge uh, we have a very very good team they were based in Silicon Valley uh, you know there's around about 20 25 of us now and um, you know they're really committed to the project none of them really travel outside the office they stay in the office you won't see them at like shows you won't see them in the telegram so they're really really focused on delivering the project um, so the first challenge is to deliver the main network and then thereafter is adoption of the network and um, both of those we see going really well so far partnerships are going really well there's a lot of interest in zero chain um, and that means adoption of the network because they you know buy and hold tokens to receive storage and use the cloud um, and then um, delivery of the network is going well because our protocols are being broken down daily um, you know readdressed um, you know like just to make sure everything's watertight um, and that happens on a daily basis and we have a uh, development team we have research team who kind of look at um, things from a different uh, perspective and readdress um, all, all the protocols on a regular basis to make sure that everything's um, watertight and as uh, strong as it can be.